there are two cities two areas of the world mentioned in relation to the last days of wars and rumors of wars one is in the book of zechariah chapter 14 we read in verse 2 zechariah chapter 14 verse 2 i will gather all nations against jerusalem to battle jerusalem is going to be the center of a lot of conflict in the last days and that was written 2500 years ago jesus said in luke's gospel and chapter 21 and verse 24 jerusalem last part of that verse will be trampled under foot by the gentiles until the times of the gentiles is fulfilled verse 20 when you see jerusalem surrounded by armies then recognize that her desolation is near that happened once 40 years after christ's death when jerusalem was destroyed it's going to happen again at the end of time jerusalem verse 24 will be ruled by non-jewish people until the end of time let me tell you something about jerusalem From the time of Nebuchadnezzar 500 years before Christ Jerusalem came under the control of foreign powers the Babylonians the Greeks finally the Romans in Jesus time it was the Romans and then the Romans ruled Jerusalem for a long time and then other people then the Muslims and finally the British in 1900s it was only in 1947 that israel came into the hands of the jews and 1967 that jerusalem finally came back into the hands of the jews fulfilling luke 21:24 that never happened till 1967 it was not even true when jesus was on earth so something happened 1967 jesus spoke about it 2000 years earlier the other part of the world which is mentioned in relation to the last days you read in revelation chapter 9 revelation is the book about the last days and there it speaks about uh revelation 9 it says you know the seventh trumpet is the last trumpet it says the last trumpet christ will return but here it speaks of the sixth angel sounding a trumpet it's not the last one just before the last one um the sixth angel revelation chapter 9 verse 13 the sixth angel sounded his trumpet the second last trumpet and i heard a voice saying release the four angels verse 14 the demons who are bound near the great river euphrates do you know where the river euphrates is iraq release the demons that are bound in iraq so that war will come the armies of mankind verse 16 will come 200 million of them all over and there's going to be war in iraq chapter 16 just before the last trumpet again chapter 16 and verse 12 and the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river euphrates and the water was dried up the way would be prepared for the kings of the beast kings from the east and they are gathered the demon spirits of demons verse 14 to go out to bring the rulers of the world for war in iraq so there are only two places in the bible where it says in the last days there's going to be war jerusalem and iraq Do you know that there was no war in Iraq I mean no worldwide type of war in Iraq until about 4 years ago It was a pretty peaceful place I mean there was dictatorship they had little in, little wars with small wars with Iran and all for a long time but then for the last many years it has been peaceful and in the last century and all there was no war at all in Iraq There's never been wars in Iraq 
Why in the world is the holy, why does the book of Revelation talk about war in Iraq? I just want to say we are pretty close to the coming of the Lord. You know what Jesus said when you see this, this is the beginning of birth pains. And I believe when we see the persecution, somebody who knows more about Christian missionary work in North India and the many parts of India told me this himself. He said, I've been watching Christian missionary work and observing at first hand Christian missionary work in North India and other parts of India. He said, I have never in the last 20 years seen as much persecution against Christians as in the year 2006 and 2007. We don't know about it because we don't read. I keep in touch with it all the time about persecution anywhere in the world. I, I keep in touch because I want to know what's happening to my brothers and sisters and I want to be ready for the last days. And I want to say to you, have you ever heard of pastors being beaten up in Bangalore? It's happened on the outskirts of Bangalore for the first time this year. It's never happened before. It's moving from the north to the south and will one day cover all nations. You shall be hated by all nations for my name's sake. The Bible says there'll be a long period of tribulation, six, seven years. The last three and a half years will be the worst. There'll be a person called the Antichrist who rules. We don't know all the details whether the Antichrist is a person or a system. I don't know. But I know that he will hate Christians. And I know the book of Revelation says there will be people who will hold up to the testimony of Jesus and obey God's commandments in the last days who will be killed by the Antichrist. I want to say we must be ready. So people ask me, Brother Zach, are you looking forward to the tribulation or are you looking forward to the coming of Christ? It's like asking this mother who was barren for 20 years, are you looking forward to the birth pains? Oh no, <laughs> I'm looking forward to the coming birth of a baby. I'm not looking forward to the birth pains. I'm looking forward to seeing my savior. Just like that mother is looking forward to the birth of a baby. But she knows that before the birth of the baby, there will be a period of birth pains. And I know that there will be a period of difficulty. So I want to say, if the Lord makes you rich, don't set your heart on riches. If the Lord blesses you with earthly things and comfort, don't set your heart on it. It says in 1 Corinthians 7, that those who use the world don't be taken up with the comforts you have. Use it, but don't be attached to it. Nothing is important except doing the will of God. If the devil can convince you that something is important, you have to have it. You can't live without it. He's got you. And I've got to prove to the devil, I can live without that. So a lot of people think sex is very important. Yeah, sex is okay. When you're married, you can have sex. But what if your wife dies? What will you do then? Take comfort in the fact that Jesus and Paul never had sex all their life. What you call is essential pleasure. A man like Paul never had it all his life. Can you imagine a man never had it all his life? And he did a work for God? That proves it's not essential. If you have it, use it. You enjoy chicken biryani. I don't think Jesus ever ate chicken biryani once in his life. If you get it, take it, but it's not essential. That's what I'm saying. The lot of things which are not essential. You got a nice Dunlop pillow mattress. Jesus never had one, but he still lived. You have a car, fine. Jesus never even had a scooter. Use these, but don't get taken up with it. Don't think these are all essential to life. Think of the, I often meditate on the things that Jesus never had and he lived such a fulfilled life. The things that Paul never had, what a fulfilled life he had. I say, Lord, whatever you give me, you give me a house, you give me a car, I use them. But I'm not taken up with these things. I know that Paul and the apostles lived without these things. I want to fulfill the will of God. So what shall I say to you? I'm not talking you, telling you to be an ascetic. No, use whatever God gives you. Whatever God gives you. But don't be taken up with it. Money is not everything. Sex is not everything. 
comfort is not everything entertainment is not everything people say oh brother we are under such pressure we need to relax okay relax but don't make everything of relaxation and entertainment otherwise the devil will get you he who does the will of god will remain forever be a disciple of jesus love jesus more than you love your father mother brother sister wife children your job your money your bank account your house your property love jesus supremely and you can be a disciple decide that you're going to take up the cross every day and follow jesus you're going to deny yourself you're going to die to yourself you're going to die to your lusts of your eyes and your ears and you seek for the power of the holy spirit every day you can be a disciple and whatever you have of this world be detached from it Don't rejoice when your wealth increases because temptation increases with it greatly. I'm happy that many of you <clears throat> young people are earning good salaries but I'm scared I'll tell you that. I'm really scared. I remember when we started out as a church 32 years ago. Uh I was the only one who had a telephone. I was the only one who had a scooter. And among all those who came, I was the richest in CFC. Can you believe that? Today I'm one of the poorest. I praise God for others who are earning so much. But I'm scared. I don't know whether they know how to handle all that they're getting. I'm concerned for our young people. Okay, good. they get large salaries praise god but i don't know whether they can handle it i don't know whether the devil will lead them astray from jesus if he succeeds there it doesn't have to be pornography it can be wealth wealth can lead you away from god too ask god to give you wisdom how to handle the money you get it's very very important let's pray as we seek to be ready for the last days and the excitement of seeing our savior face to face one of these days the one who loved us died for us on the cross the one about whom we sing so lightly that we shall see him face to face see the wounds in his hands and his feet and see how much he loved us will we have regret about how we loved him in the few days he gave us on earth dear brother sister <clears throat> respond to him let us stand let us stand before our heavenly father bow our heads and our eyes and say lord i offer my life to you i dedicate my life afresh to you my life is yours from this day forgive me for i have been careless and slipped up I'm yours from today till the day you come back all I have all I am I don't want to say this lightly lord whatever you have in store for me give me boldness in the day of persecution I'm a coward lord I'm scared I'm scared I'll deny you I'm not like Peter I'm scared but I know you'll give me grace not to deny you And in the little trials that come in my office and in my way before that final day of persecution help me to be faithful in the little things that come my way now little things lord help me to be free from sin to gladly take up the cross help me to impart these values to my children right from their childhood that it's worth it all to live for jesus Lord help me I can't do it fill me with your holy spirit not just now but all the time every day fill me lord with your holy spirit give me power i want to love you i don't want money i don't want comfort i just want to love you with all my heart and live for you because you gave yourself for me thank you lord jesus heavenly father thank you for your wonderful people here who've taken all the trouble to come here for these 3 4 days i know they've got a heart for you I pray that they will realize their weakness and seek you for your power. 
that you'll be glorified in their lives. In Jesus' name, Amen.